Welcome everybody to um, the Flex Solar Powered Asset Tracker presentation. Uh, I appreciate you making some time to come sit down with us today and learn a little bit more. Uh, my name is Corey Halbardier. I am the Global Head of uh, Business Development and Operations for the Tracking and Telematics Business Unit at Flex. And with me I have uh, Bob Zimmer. Bob is the Supply Chain Fleet Technology Senior Manager with uh, PepsiCo. And so the format of what we're going to do, um, I'm going to use most of this time to uh, interview Bob, talk to him a little bit about, or ask him some questions related to uh, his implementation of the Flex uh, trailer management system, and then, um, and then we'll open it up to some questions. So without further ado, Bob, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so first question is, uh, what were some of the challenges that you experienced prior to um, the middle of 2018 with your trailer fleet? So initially, we had almost zero visibility to where our trailers were. We had almost zero visibility to what our true utilization was for the trailers. We had manual tracking of when they were being sent out and when they were coming back. And uh, nationally, we, just, we had nothing aggregating that information into real, real data. We also had challenges with reliability. We also had challenges with PM compliance. We would have yard hustlers working, looking for trucks, running around the lot multiple times. We'd have technicians, three technicians a day, walking the yard for an hour with a clipboard looking for trailers and then comparing those to our enterprise asset management solution to see which were due for PM. Awesome. And then um, what were you hoping to accomplish with, uh, with a newer trailer management system? So really we, we needed a, a sustainable trailer tracking solution, which is really what this project was titled. We needed to be able to install a solution on the trailer that would give us near real-time telematics, true telematics, just like we had in the powered assets. We needed a solution that was maintenance-free. We needed a solution that was safe to install, that was easy to install, no maintenance for batteries, no PM on the actual device itself, that would give us true physical location, not relative, but physical location of where that trailer was at any given point in time, whether it was on road being used, whether it was on the lot not being used, whether it was at the dock door, whether it was just about to leave, whether it was back on the way. And um, what were, so you had a, a trailer management, uh, or you had a, a trailer tracker that you were using prior to that. It was a battery powered unit? Yes. yes. And, and you, so what were some of the challenges with the, with the, um, the maintenance related to that battery powered unit? So historically, if you look at kind of the trailer tracking progression, right? So we started off with battery powered solutions, all right? It, pre solar, pre having solar be able to recharge something that would last a significant period of time. So you'd have a six month PM cycle, cycle typically on the battery powered trailer trackers. The old adage of putting that trailer tracker on the top of the trailer and then tethering it off now you've got on the top of the trailer, what's there? You have a little dip. And what happens when snow melts? You have water. And when you have a battery pack that slides in and out, you typically have a seal, which actually needs to be replaced, not just lubricated, but replaced whenever the batteries are replaced. And guess what never happens when they PM those things? They put batteries in them and just pop it right back in. So now as soon as it rains or it snows, I have water intrusion and I have a dead device. So over time, you start to lose visibility to where your trailers are. And once you lose visibility to where that trailer is, it's really difficult to then send a technician out to fix the device. The other side of it too, with that installation method, yeah, it's tethered, but I could tell you there's an on-ramp outside my Denver DC where my technician goes once a week and gathers up all the devices that have flown right off the top of those trailers. So we needed to have a solution that was installed not on the top of the trailer. The last thing I want to have is, is one of my technicians climbing a ladder to go on top of, and glue a device to the top of the trailer. We wanted it to be easy, accessible, and a permanent installation. And then what was your selection criteria as you were looking at multiple uh, potential options? So in terms of the selection criteria, we, we partnered with Geotab and the marketplace to identify opportunities for next-gen trailer tracking. We put together a very robust scorecard and we invited those vendors that were going to take part in our POC to install their devices on eight different trailers. We installed four devices on each trailer and then we monitored them over a period of eight to 12 weeks. 
part of that scorecard was we take a screenshot in MyGeoTab, since every single solution had to be an integrated solution fully within MyGeoTab, not a separate pop-out solution. And we give the technician a screen print and say, here's where the it says the trailers are, go find them and mark on this map exactly where they are. So when we talk about the accuracy of the data, that was really key because typically when you look at trailer tracking, it, it, it's relative. It's not true exactly where it is, all right? It's, I am nearby that camera. And you, are, you have to put into the, into the system kind of all those relative points versus I am at dock door 30 or I am on route four about 10 miles out headed towards the DC. And then uh, earlier last year, you rolled this out on your whole trailer fleet. So uh, what have been the benefits that you've seen now in, in having that you know, year's worth of data? How are you using it? So the rollout initially provided some cost savings, and it was day one cost savings. And it was simple things, very simple things. I saved three hours of technician time per day per traffic center. So if you think we're running three full shifts, we have our own technicians, they're very skilled. This is not inexpensive labor. They're going out with a clipboard, literally one hour per shift, walking the lot looking for trailers, documenting where the trailers were. And then they'd have to go back, cross-reference that data with a report from our EAM system showing which ones were in need of or overdue for a PM, okay? So three hours per day per traffic center right off the bat. The second piece was yard hostler time. So the yard hostels now can use an app that shows them exactly where that trailer is on the yard and they can go right to it versus driving around because I mean trailers move all, all throughout the day. So it might have, you might have passed it an hour ago, but now it might be over here, right? And we want to make sure that they can get there as quickly as possible. So right off the bat, we had those two. In addition, after we had done the rollout nationally, now we have full visibility by traffic center, by location as to what their utilization is on, on the trailers. And it's true utilization. It's not just, we think we might use the trailers 10% of the time. And no, 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 this is exact, exact utilization by trailer type, by trailer subclass, by trailer length, by traffic center. That's extremely powerful data when you're going to try and find a way to update your trailer fleet. Typically, and this is another piece of the savings, typically we would just replace the oldest trailer, right? But the, the, we didn't really have data to say otherwise. The oldest, typical, right? Hello? There we go. That, it's a big mistake sometimes when you make that assumption and you replace the trailer with a similar trailer, just newer, you get them out to the field. Hello? <laughs> Keeps cutting out. Good? All right, so, so you get those trailers out to the field, they're brand new, and they're like, we can't use these. Well, why? Well, they're not long enough. Well, we, we didn't know that, but now we do. And so now we can cherry pick exactly which trailers we need to replace, and we can move trailers based on their utilization versus renting trailers. So there's probably five examples right off the bat of, of the savings. Have there, been any, um, have there been any additional benefits that you got that you didn't expect it right off the bat? Uh, from implementing the solution? We, we did, and since it was a Geotab integrated solution, what we did is we gave access nationally to our user base. And I'm extremely militant about who has access to our Geotab systems, okay? We've got a lot of information out there. We've got a lot of identifiable information out there for the powered assets. But if you think about trailers, there's no people involved. So I'm very, very little to no risk as far as exposing anything or anybody it's just an asset. So we gave national access to everyone that needed to have access. And what happened was, once the folks in the traffic center front office got informed of what we had, they're coming out of the woodwork going, can we have access, can we have access, can we have? So from dispatch, from planning, from loading, from technicians, from administration, now everybody has access. We put together a national training session and we put together a telematics SME team and then go out and champion within each region this cause. And now the users are very familiar with the reporting that's in my Geotab. They're very familiar with how to access the information. And it's, and it's truly self-service. And it just, it, 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 every week we get more and more feedback from the field and how they're using this information and this data to now automate processes and give back time to the field to do what they really need to do.
So could you say maybe a little bit more about what are some of those reports that you're using or how are some of these folks um, utilizing the data? So right off the bat, our PM compliance report. So we have a PM compliance report with the API integration to Geotab and our EAM solution that basically identifies when the PMs are due, what trailers need to be PM. With the rules engine within my Geotab, we're able to identify when a trailer enters a traffic center. We're able to flag that, and we're able to then co-locate that data on the PM report. So all the field needs to do is run that PM report with the two integrated solutions, and now they can see all the trailers that are due for PM and that are on their yard. We can also track traffic centers that are allowing trailers to leave while they're due for PM. So they're kicking the PM down the road. So that identifies a training issue for us, or it might identify a staffing issue for us. So that's, that's number one. The other side of it, too, is utilization. You know, the utilization is, is, is really, really key because rental trailers are very, very expensive. The other side of it, too, is it's not really a report, but just in my geotab, the visual interface, just doing the nearest to see what's outside. We had one, I was telling Neil last night, I got an email um, from one of my PepsiCo sites, and he said that I just saved them $50,000. They said, this implementation is paid for itself in one instance. They had a trailer that was picked up and parked behind a store that was no longer in existence, and then other trailers were put in front of it. We would have never found that trailer if it was not for that tracking device. And um, uh, how, would, how could you quantify, so that's a great example, one of the ways to quantify the savings. If you were to look at the reports and the ways that you're utilizing that data, um, uh, time saved on lots, how could you quantify your savings so far from implementing a trailer management solution with the Plex? So again, you know, we talk yard hostler time, you talk technician time, you talk administrative time, you're giving people back time in their day by automating processes, whether that's through reporting, whether that's through now accuracy of data. We're also helping our COE, our center of excellence, and our engineers design better trailers, because we do self-design all our trailers. We're able to spec what needs to be spec'd out in the field. We're able to replace intelligently versus just throwing a dart. We're also able to identify issues in overuse of rentals. And we're also able to track the rentals as well. These are not just going on our own owned assets. Yeah. The way that these install, it's almost zero destruction to the trailer. And they're very easy to uninstall and take back off. So we're able to track assets, whether they're our assets or whether they're rental assets, we're able to get that data in real time, and since it is all fully integrated within Geotab, it just hits all of the existing reports. Well, the other cool thing is a lot of the powered asset reports that we already developed, we can use for trailers too. And um, what, uh, what types of companies should look at um, moving from just trailer tracking or from nothing to a trailer management? Well, I think any now with the change in the data plans, with the change in the cost of the hardware, that point of entry is now that bar has become really, really low. So it's become very inexpensive. The value add to the data, it, seriously, it'll, it'll pay for itself. So any fleet that's running non-powered assets that can take advantage of this. It's small fleet, large fleet, it really doesn't matter. The larger, obviously, the, the bigger the payback you're going to get. We're not only, only installing these on trailers, however. We have hurricane readiness equipment, such as generators, such as fuel tankers. And you know what? I might not utilize those very much, but when I need them, I really need to know exactly where they are. And if I have a battery device on there that's gone dead, I'm, I'm out of, dead in the water. It, last night as we were talking, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, install time. And I think you shared a, a story with you and uh, one, of your, one of your coworkers installing a number of these devices. Could you, could you share that? So the installation is, is really key when you talk about trailer tracking. As I, as I talked before, typically top of the trailer, it's glued on and then tethered, which means you're pulling a trailer out of service bringing it into the shop, waiting for it to come up to temperature, you're getting a technician, which is now a very unsafe thing, getting a technician on top of the trailer, cleaning it off, gluing it, waiting, getting, letting it dry, putting the tether, bringing it back into service. That's almost half a day, and now you're, tie, you're tying up a bay where you could be doing 3 p.m.s in that period of time, right? So when we talk about installation, one of our key criteria is it needed to be simple, it needed to be easy, and it needed to be fast. So we decided that we found a good spot which would protect the device, um, and it was also a spot where we could get the device an ample amount of ambient light so it would still recharge. 
It was eight feet up middle of the trailer. So we only needed a very short ladder and one technician could do the installation by themselves. We actually made a video because our engineers didn't believe us that the installation was so easy. We made a, a real-time video for installation and it was a three minute video from start to finish. The device is riveted on, there's silicone put in, in the holes in the rivets. We use self-expanding rivets on the back and one technician can install in three minutes. Now Brendan in the back there, uh, my partner in crime, uh, in engineering this, we've set out to prove this yet again. After we made the video, we did the entire Denver site. We did 110 trailers, daylight only, in one day, between the two of us. So this is very, very quick and easy to retrofit. We, we were able to run through the national retrofit very, very quickly. It took us nine weeks with two installation teams going site to site to get 80% of our trailers done. And uh, any final thoughts? So, so final thoughts are, I, th I think, you know, if, if, you, if you look at the integration within Geotab, which was really key, Geotab is our global telematics supplier. We have a lot of integration with the APIs, with our other cloud-based applications, with reporting, with just, just data, all right? So, so adding to that and having one place with the rules engine, with, with the robust systems, and with their commitment to stand behind this product, with a fantastic warranty as well as their service, order it through my admin. It, it's seamless. It's just like buying any other Go device, which is really what we were looking for. I mean, we spent five years, literally five years in Skunk Works with Tom Wally, with, with the Geotab crew, with, with other vendors, and then we, it finally came down to this. So I'm, I'm very, very happy with the solution. Uh, we're still installing on the Pepsi side. The Frito side is completely done. Uh, and, and we're getting kind of pings from other areas of the world now and, you know, hey, can we implement this? So the way that this is designed, we can. And the other side of it, too, is with, with the internal connectivity capability and the external capability for connectivity through that RS-262 port, we're able to now work with the other marketplace partners with sensors, whether they're thickness sensors, whether they're pressure sensors, whether they're temperature sensors, spatial sensors, um, to now go full circle and not only are we tracking the asset, but we're tracking other components within that asset or other components that are part of that asset, i.e. liftgate batteries, i.e. tires, bearings, weights. Um, so it really sky's the limit. So we're really, really looking for that, that, all right, so now what's next, right? Because as we always say, this is the Geotab device is the gift that keeps on giving because every year there's something new. There's another new productivity stream that whether they've designed it or we, or we engineered it or, or, or what. The other side of it too is if you do this in an in installation, it's not just plug and play. There's a little bit of work involved. Get some really talented developers. Get a really talented database guy or, or gal and go through and work that API because there are things in that API that, that you can do that Geotab's not even aware of yet, all right? I mean, the integrations that we've done in-house, ourselves, we did a three-week integration that literally now auto-assigns all, all of our trailers based on the last traffic center, it's just hit, and it runs every hour for our entire fleet. And it's super performant. So there's a lot of things that you can do programming-wise within that API, and I think that's, that's really what makes this system stand out above and beyond the rest is the amount of folks here that are just dedicated to that and the openness of Neil to work with it and, and make changes and enhancements based on what the customers are saying, yeah. based on what the industry needs. Yeah, yeah so I think um, as, as uh, trailer telematics has, uh, ha the, the industry has grown as the technology has improved, we do one minute uh, GPS fixes the entire time while it's moving. So it gives you an abundance of data that can then be used in multiple different ways for PM compliance, as, as Bob had mentioned here, for finding trailers on lots faster, for understanding when trailers are inbound to a particular lot, for uh, finding them wherever they are left behind buildings can and behind trailers. Can I trailers. add to that? Yeah. So, so part of the algorithm that was designed for this particular project uh, we really wanted real-time trailer tracking, right? Trailer tracking has always been the black sheep of you know, telematics, right? You just get a relative ping once a day. That's all you need, right? 
So we really want a true real-time telematics while this device is on road. So when we look at a Go9 with the Pro Plus and we see a little triangle moving down the road and there's a trailer right behind it. And that's wonderful. When the trailer gets to the lot and it gets dropped, the device then will look at that and start a timer for 24 hours and give us between four and six pings, as long as it doesn't move, for the next 24 hours. And then it goes into a once a day ping to conserve power, right? If it hasn't detected that it's been moved, and it's accelerometer based, so we're not waiting for a hostler to plug in electric, which they never do, right? So once it detects that it's been moved, it resets everything and it goes right back into real time. So I could see it move from slot A to dock B to the gate, it sat there for a while, and now it's on road. So if you think about it, it, it it's, it's almost like having a powered asset device on the trailer, which is really what we wanted. We just needed that next level of visibility. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Now we're going to open it up for questions. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned that you uh, get true utilization of the uh, trailers. Just wondering what your measure of that true uh, utilization is. Is it uh, you know, while it's moving or is it while it's in that four hour ping mode or what, so what's the definition of utilization? Great question. So it, it uh, will both track uh, time and movement as well as uh, miles, well, it's an estimate of miles. So, so when we talk about utilization as a whole, I want to track the amount of time that that trailer is outside of my yard being driven to or from a customer or sitting at a customer. Once it's back on my lot, I should be flipping that trailer and sending it back out. So the amount of time that trailer actually sits on lot versus the amount of time that it's actually off being used. So it's very simple, simple math, and it's extremely easy to track. And now that we've got the rules engine in play, we're able to track that by location, by trailer subclass, by trailer type. So it gives us a visibility that we've never, ever had. Hey, uh, I was just wondering in terms of reporting and actually getting the data of the Flex device to the end customer, what that looks like in that I have some experience in terms of I put together a PHP script that reports temperatures and location and time. And I was just wondering um, what we should expect in terms of how mature that reporting is going to get and what that'll look like for actually having the customer look at it and being able to interpret it in a mature context. So I'm going to let Stephen Bell go ahead and answer that question with Geotab. Hey, so um, the best way to answer that question is a lot of the data that comes in through the Flex device is reporting as measurement data. You, I mean, you got GPS, you got mileage, you got um, engine hours or on road hours, but all that information is built so it comes through in reporting just like any other report you're going to build. So there are some basic reports that can be delivered that for a customer to look at that depending on what they want, but they can also add into that really, really deeply based on what they're looking for. So if they're trying to understand uh, you know, where uh, the battery level is on every unit, they could have a battery-based report for all their trailers with an exception. So it kicks off if there's a battery that's you know, maybe not charging properly or it's been parked in the shade. Um, all the way to uh, what Bob was talking about with utilization of how long they're traveling in each zone or, or where they're at for each dock for each day. Um, all that reporting is built in a way that you can customize it based on the customer needs. So it's really flexible. It's not just going to be static reports that are kicked out. So hopefully that helps answer that question a little bit better. All right, one more question. So thinking about different customers and their operations, um, a lot of these trailers go places and they just get left there for a couple months sometimes, not just on a yard. Communication. Uh, if you have a problem with the device failing to communicate, what kind of ha what happens there? Because we we've used like other customers, we've we've presented other options, and so when these devices fail to communicate, and and we're got a customer who's 600, 700 miles away from that trailer, um, what does Flex do differently, or what does this product provide differently, or or what are those types of uh, alternatives there? Yeah, so I think it depends on uh, the specific reason it's not communicating, right? If it's outside of a, this is a CAD M and BIOT with a 2G fallback. So if it's outside of those areas, it will store the movement data. And as soon as you get back into coverage, then it will upload all of the, the missed data. Um, from, if it is sitting stationary uh, for 
and the, the solar panel is covered. You know, Steven actually uh, ran a test where he put duct tape over the module and ran it on his, um, on his vehicle for several months to just see how much it would track down. So if it is sitting stationary, it'll last for about eight months stationary with the solar module completely covered. So it really just depends on what's the reason it wouldn't be communicating or the other devices hasn't been communicating. Yep. And, and so with ours, what we've done is we've put a proactive report together that identifies devices where we have opportunities uh, uh, that are upcoming, and we, we look at battery health. And so we have auto alerts, and we also have a, a health report that'll show us devices where we may have an issue. Now, obviously, we're, we're first adapters, so we're going to have a slightly higher failure rate than most. Um, it's been extremely low, uh, less than 1%. And we've learned quickly kind of what those issues were and are made those devices out and um, taking care of that. But going forward, we are proactively looking at them. And if we do have one that gives us a below 65%, we'll generate a work order out to our technician to take a look at it, assuming they can get to it, of course. Right. But the key is you want to address it before you lose visibility to it. Because once you lose visibility to it, now it could be anywhere. That's a challenge. All right, thank you, gentlemen. If you have any more questions for Flex, please feel free to visit their booth. Everyone yeah, the booth is right over here. Right over there. Everyone have a good afternoon and enjoy lunch.